Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Climate Change and Nature Recovery Service Transformation Committee. Um, first of all, apologies for absence. Uh, thank you, Chair. Apology from Councillor Stewart Rice. Thank you. Uh, secondly, any disclosures of personal pre prejudicial interests? No, nothing. OK, uh, agenda point three minutes. Um, can we get a proposal for agreeing the minutes of the previous meeting of 3rd of June? Thank you. And can we get a seconder? Oh. I guess then we'll have to. I can second it myself. OK, I will second it myself then. Thank you. Uh, so moving on to the main agenda point, uh, we've got a presentation today on our local places for nature program. Uh, and the Local Nature Partnership Grant 2023 to 25. Uh, I understand it's Mark that's leading on this. So over to you, Mark. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm just going to give you a uh, update on, on the Welsh Government funding that we're uh, given it's called local places for nature program um, so this kind of helps us deliver our section six duty and the local nature partnership uh, plan uh, there's uh, a suite of different programs under this scheme so ours is just one of them they also give money to the heritage fund and to keep wells tidy but this is the one that's connected to our local nature partnership and so it's for the last uh, two years that we've had this money and currently this financial year so so the aim of the scheme is all about basically creating, restoring and enhancing. Ah, sorry. OK, um, so yeah, it's all about delivering natural capital assets basically across Wales. So it comes to all of our county councils and about delivering nature and then also connecting it um, with people. And like I said, it's all about uh, the local nature partnerships. So there are you know, we've got about 80 organisations on there now, lots of different external and internal partners uh, involved. And so in terms of what they're trying to deliver with this funding, it's very much connected to our local nature recovery action plan and also delivering 30 by 30, which is the target that's come kind of globally now down through the Welsh Government to get 30% um, of our land and sea protected for wildlife by 2030 and ideally in some sort of uh, good condition or at least being managed for nature. Uh, we don't need to go through all the detail of this, but it's just highlighting some of the kind of targets that we need to try and hit. So this is this is for the whole of Wales, not just for uh, Swansea in particular, but basically it's talking about wildflowers, uh, community orchards, tree planting, community food growing, um, and then, you know, um, woodland work and, and other work at kind of transport interchanges and working with the NHS. So those are the sort of targets that we need to meet by um, utilising this funding. And so for Swansea, we focused on GI, so that's green infrastructure, uh, kind of wildflower, green space and habitat creation, enhancement, tree planting and community food growing as the actions that we've been trying to deliver this uh, the last financial year and, and this current financial year. In terms of the amount of money we've been given, just over a million pounds in total over the two years. And so some of that helps pay for our, our staff um, uh, internally. Uh, and then the rest of it then goes to the capital. So that's actually delivering the natural uh, capital assets uh, across Swansea. And then this is just a, a summary map that we submitted with our application, which just highlights the areas that we're working in. And kind of the, the base map is an eco, our ecosystem resilience map that we got produced a few years ago. So it's just showing the kind of the lighter um, red areas are the least resilient from an ecosystem point of view, the least functioning and the darker red are kind of generally described as more uh, functioning in their resilience. 
and then a second map which again um, part of our funding we need to try and work in um, areas of deprivation so uh, this is just the map showing the areas that we're going to try and work on as part of the project and the darker blue is where are the um, the more deprived wards so just to quickly go through some examples can't go through everything today but just the sort of things diverse range of things that we're doing as part of the scheme so uh, Burroughs Road Rain Gardens, that's one of the green infrastructure elements that has recently been completed. And this is just an illustration to show hopefully how once all the, the um, plants grow up, how it will look. Have you seen it? What the. Uh... Oh, good. Yeah, well, hopefully it will look even better uh, as time goes on. Um, and then we also helped fund the designs for the Town Hill Roundabout scheme. It's another green infrastructure scheme. And then hopefully that's going to be funded by some other funding to actually deliver that. We've also been giving money to the Environment Centre and, and another project called the Community Green Space Project, which again is getting more planters out and about and working with community groups and our, and our local communities to get them kind of growing food and getting more uh, wildflowers out there. Been working on our ponds, so more kind of uh, slightly rural ponds, as well as the, the one on the left is uh, the the pond by Bob on the Pond, um, which has got kind of a silt and invasive species issues. So we've been working on that. We've also been working on our various rare and important grasslands. So we've got marshy grassland, limestone coastal grassland, and um, calaminarian grassland, which is a really rare type of grassland that you don't get in many places that is connected to our industrial past. We've only got it because of a lot of the kind of the toxic ground that was left after, um, after a lot of our industry in the past. So we've been trying to work on those. Also progressing with uh, a campaign that's um, kind of jointly led with the Gower Ornithological Society, so Saving Swansea Swift. So in terms of our internal work on that, see there's a lot of uh, insulation work going on in our um, council homes. And so while we've got all of that work progressing and we've got scaffolding up, we're now uh, buying bird and back boxes to install uh, once the insulation's gone in. So that's been really successful. We've also been tree planting, uh, trying to plant kind of generally larger standard trees in important kind of key areas around the urban environment. So that's been going well. And then also we have been giving money externally to our partners within the, within the local nature partnership. So Pentlager Valley Woods, they've got a kind of a, a wetlands and water vault project that we helped uh, fund that is also ongoing. Also giving money to um, Kyavel in CSA, so Community Supported Agriculture Scheme. They've had some ponds created and some wheelchair access work to help uh, get people to come and help with their, um, their site up near, um, connected to uh, Morriston Hospital. And they've got a veg box scheme working with West Wales River Trust. So they're trying to remove uh, fish barriers across our, our waterways and uh, kind of assist otters to get to places where they're or struggling to get to, or if they're getting unfortunately hit by cars, then that's another element of our work. Some of you might have heard of Coid Leol. So they've been uh, working on a project that we funded on the hillside corridor. So just below Pantacalin Road, working with communities there to, to enhance um, the corridor and just generally get people out in nature and uh, enjoying themselves. Uh, we also gave some money to Swansea Community Farm for some wildlife uh, boxes that they put up with their student and students and volunteers. Working with Swansea Community Farm, so they've got a, a kind of community and, and goat project that they're trying to um, get going, where not only are they involving the local community in, in looking after uh, livestock, which is great in itself, but also we're trying to find sites across Swansea where we can potentially manage our habitats with goats so especially where you've got a lot of potentially invasive species or kind of invasive scrubland on important grasslands looking at trying to get goats to help manage that land so fingers crossed that project's going to be going ahead soon the orchard project they've been getting out there planting lots of orchards and working with community groups and then another small example is like you know putting um planters in at getty park uh, community center for their kind of food growing and, and wildflowers and we've also been give, giving money to the local wildlife trust. So they've got a next door nature project that's been doing similar work, working with kind of businesses and communities and trying to get them uh, kind of growing more food and as well as uh, more wildflowers. 
And so uh, in terms of our engagement work, we've got my colleague uh, Evie. So she's been getting out there and uh, she's our volunteer coordinator. She's been getting out there engaging with lots of different communities, as you can see, a lot of work there. And that's just the work that we've done internally. That doesn't in include all the other volunteer work that's happened uh, that our, ex our external partners have been funded to um, work on. So that's kind of a summary of generally where we are and what we've been doing last year and um, this financial year. There are we're hopeful that we will get, we'll get more funding in, in the coming years, in which case if anyone's got kind of any ideas of other projects they think might be suitable for this grant, that would be great. But also there is uh, another part of money that's accessible called the Challenge Fund, um, which we've secured money, some more money for the Pentlag Air Trust to do some woodland creation and restoration work. So this is just another example of the work that will be going ahead um, this financial year. So that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. That's a really great presentation. Really great to see. Um, are there any questions or comments from any committee members here? Uh, Councillor Phillips. Um, you gave a, a, some maps of the schemes that were being planned in different colours. Is there a list of those? Because it was impossible to determine what they were. Yeah, so that, that was just highlighting the kind of the, the key areas where we we're working. But as part of the funding, we have to put um, all of the schemes online. So there's a website where once we've um, finished the projects, they'll be put on there and you can have a look at all of the schemes or we can send you specific details sooner if you're interested. For an antediluvian like me, is it on a piece of paper? We can get it to you on a piece of Thank paper. Thank you, Roger. Um, you use the words GI. What does that stand for? So that was for green infrastructure. OK. <clears throat> um, you were talking about the various projects. Um, the National Waterfront, uh, Owen Griffiths' scheme, um, where they're growing in the back of the National Waterfront. Raft, is that involved in this? Yeah, we haven't funded Graft directly, but we have been working with Owen on some other projects uh, around St Helens Road and also Swansea um, Railway Station. The planters and um, the benches there were part funded through this scheme, as are the planters along the rain planters along St Helens Road. But yeah, not the Graft project as such. You mentioned the railway, the elevated bit at the back of the station, the empty elevated track. Is that open? From British Rail to turn into some sort of park in this city centre? It's, it's something that's been looked at for many years, I think, just to see whether it's feasible to turn it into a, like a high line, um, you know, garden. There are issues around the um, ownership, I think, which have made it not straightforward, but, you know, it's something that I think there has been some work done on a feasibility study, but I'm not sure quite where it's at at present. I know Transport for Wales uh, and others have been looking into it. Because I noticed going back and forward to the multi-storey car park at the station that the Grand Hotel has demolished a building and pushed all the rubble into the, the ground below the bridge, um, which somebody had suggested, I think, was one of the Quaker burial grounds. But Gosh. I, I mentioned that. The other one was a potential issue. We, You mentioned you want to increase in the number of allotments. Um, excellent, excellent idea. We tried to devolve the management of allotments to the allotment keepers. And in most cases, it didn't work and they handed them back because it was so much more expensive. Have we looked at how we're going to encourage people to manage the allotments if we're not going to take them on if we're doing them? Because, for example, um, when they took over the management of them, not only were they paying a large amounts of rent, but if they wanted to put up a polytunnel, they had to pay for planning permission. Whereas when it was the council under the council budget, nobody paid for planning permission. Yeah, we're not actually um, directly encouraging a lot new allotments. It's more like uh, opportunities for community growing through small scale planters. Um, your, but your presentation included the words new allotments. New community orchards, maybe? No, you used the word allotments. I wrote it down. 
Okay. I, I think that was under the PFG objectives list. So it might have been part of the overall one of the overarching objectives, objectives that yeah. we were we're we're working towards. Well, we did have a meeting on community growing not so long ago where the issue about responsibility for allotments uh, did come up. So perhaps that information feedback could be provided. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can get an update on that for you in the next meeting. Is that um, everything from you, Councillor Phillips? I think so. Um, yeah. Any other <laughs> questions? Uh, Councillor Baker? Hi. Uh, it's nice to hear about the ones, or well, the pencil again, the value ones, as we say. Uh, to our, which our young people up the estate, they call it the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I think they're turning into Aussies there. But uh, it's a beautiful site, and there's a lot going on up there, which there is, I know there's dire need of funding there. They get a good amount of volunteers, cutting back the bracken and everything up there. But I know the funding is desperately needed there for the ambitions they've got up in the Valley Woods which is fantastic compared to, well, I've been living on the estate 40 years, 40 years ago when I went over there. You had lines of cars, you had burnt out cars, you had everything dumped over there. Now, it's lovely, you could go walk your dogs, ride your bike. They, we have asked, and people have asked, about Bridalway through Valley Woods, because there was original Bridalway site up there. So I think they're looking into it, I'm not quite sure. The city farm, marvellous. There's a lot of parents find it, how can you say, very easy on the purse strings when it's a farm, when it's only across the estate or come down from Penland. Easy accessible for our area of Penderry, very accessible. And the parents up there praise it because there's always something there to entertain the children, to do in th even from their children doing things to them going with an adult group and linking in. There's another excellent project that's going up there with support from the council, which I think is marvellous. And it and that's another place that needs a lot of stability. It, it is good and they do need funding. And that's what it's all about. And where are we going to find these funding for everybody? <laughs> it's like, let's work it out. But the projects that are so forth going, like the orchard scheme, there was an orchard put up on Dove Road through Pobble. They worked at the mm. Environment Centre. Uh, everybody put tr trees up for who they lost during COVID. And the trees have been left alone. It's like a little m memorial walk. The parents did put their hands up to burning out a bench when they put a giant firework on, a 50 shot, 150. It wasn't meant. They thought the bench would be all right, but it burnt the bench. But otherwise, the tenants regularly use the area and it's absolutely brilliant to see the trees thriving up there. Can I just say, I mean, all three of those projects, as you say, are really excellent. And we have been working with all three and Pentlager and the Environment Centre, the Orchard Project and the Community Farm for many, many years. And we have been able to channel quite a lot of grant funding through, through us to them. So... They have benefited quite a lot from the support that they've had from the council. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, what uh, Councillor Baker has highlighted and what you've just um, referenced is the it's really impressive the breadth of partnership working and the number of community groups that are involved in all of these projects. Um, you know, just looking at that presentation, I was sort of trying to keep a tally of how many external groups we've, we've been collaborating with and uh, I, I lost track quite quickly. Um, I think something as well that struck me looking at the presentation was how there seemed to be a very good balance between uh, some of the areas that are very rural but also looking at biodiversity within some of our more concrete areas like uh, mine and Councillor Phillips's ward. I, I, I saw a couple of things popping up and I was thinking, oh yes, that's very familiar, whether it's Coid Leal or whether it's the Burroughs Road um, or the Orchard Project's work in Primrose Hill Park. And I think what we're starting to get a really good grip on now is uh, looking at um, 
very, very small um, spaces and opportunities for linking, building up these kind of green corridors and um, opportunities to kind of build little biodiversity pathways, if you like, through some of our more built up areas. And if we can try and uh, improve on our green infrastructure, I think we've got quite a good um, opportunity there. The Burroughs Road one, which Councillor Phillips mentioned earlier, I think is going to be really, really interesting when it comes to uh, when it finishes construction. I just wanted to ask, obviously, it's immediately got um, a benefit for the local environment in terms of it's going to be visually nicer, it's going to be better for biodiversity. But in terms of its impact on soaking up rainwater, we all know that Sandfields is an area that very, very desperately needs that and is often quite prone to, to flooding. How, how will the success in that way be monitored? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I don't know I've got the right answer to it as yet. We're still working out how we will uh, measure, you know, the uptake of any um, excessive Flood waters um, being uh, drained off into into the the um, planting scheme there, but uh, yeah, it's something that it, it's on our radar to um, decide how we might measure that. But it's a good point, yeah. And I think we, when you're saying about the um, you know the little spaces, it, it, it they are really important uh, in terms of maintaining connectivity for invertebrates and other wildlife to sort of hop from one stepping stone to the other and then to be able to link across the city to the wider corridors like Swansea Bay, the River Towie, the hillside corridor and the more stepping stones we can put in between the greater the opportunity there is to maintain uh, a resilient network, a resilient population of um, pollinators and other species. And in terms of um, public engagement, you know, we often get contacted by people who are have a particular uh, either interest. We've got um, a resident living near Brynedon Park, for example, who writes to me consistently about um, a very specific breed of butterflies and the flowers that are necessary to maintain them. And we try and help to keep that area free of mowing so that the, the butterflies have the food. But um, when we do have people or community groups, uh, like Councillor Baker was saying, that have this interest and um, knowledge, very good local knowledge, how can we, how, who do we best put them in touch with in terms of um, being involved in future funding opportunities or uh, tying them into with, to what we're doing? Well, I might let Mark answer this one, but um, as he mentioned, part of the grant uh, funding from Welsh Government enables us to employ two part-time local places for nature project officers who can help liaise with the local community and also our volunteer coordinator Evie who as you can see has already engaged you know hundreds of people over the last year or so in getting them involved and out there and helping to um, record wildlife and send their records off to the local record centre so a lot of citizen science is being done and being um, you know, channeled through to, to make sure that those records are are kept uh, in a central place. But I don't know, Mark, if you want to add more to the community engagement. Yeah, I, I think our nature conservation volunteering web page has just gone live. So probably the best way to get people involved is to get them on there. And then they can contact our team on the nature conservation web, uh, email address to um, get in touch. It's a website called Wild About Swansea, which lists all of the activities that are planned. Oh, that's that's great. And I, I know that we've got, at least in our ward, we've had a, got a couple of um, public events coming up. I think one in Bryn Mellon Park and one in Primrose Hill Park as a kind of celebration of a lot of the volunteering work. So it's really nice to, uh, to get that public engagement going as well. Um, the, uh, Councillor Stevens? Yeah, thank you, Chair. It's just more of a comment on my part. I just wanted to thank you both for an excellent um, presentation and echo some of the comments here from uh, members that in that um, it was great to see you highlight some of, the, some of the great work being done by the community farm. Um, I, I've had the pleasure of visiting there in, in the past a couple of times, to be honest, and they do do it. It's great to see that 
a bit of an inner city link to agriculture, you know, albeit small. Um, and the switch that they've made now to nature conservation, I think, is fantastic. They're doing some excellent work up there, uh, as well as Pentlegare Valley Trust. I, 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 I frequently put off to myself as well, and they're doing some great, um, great work up uh, uh, there as well, you know. And and it was, um, it, it was good to hear some of your positive comments in around um, ruminants and the, uh, the how uh, the role they play in biodiversity and improving biodiversity in grasslands and stuff. So yeah, yes, thank you. Yeah, I guess just to uh, comment back on that is that you know really from our perspective, a lot of our sites would be best if they were managed through especially a lot of our nature reserve would be better if they were managed through grazing because otherwise obviously we have to basically act as the graziers and use strimmers and other ma machines to maintain them so it would be great to actually progress trying to get more grazing on some of our nature reserves. Uh, Councillor Baker? I was just going to say you're talking about grazing there was uh, I can't remember what they used up the Valley Woods right at one stage they had the big cattle the island island cattle and he went down well people the children thought he was absolutely brilliant we got cows again <laughs> but uh it was nice to see them and they've done a bloody good job up the woods much in there and they could be used on other areas like i know they use the goats down on the cadler heath to clear like brambles and everything i know a couple of people have used the goats asked could they borrow the goats to cut the hedgerow back and believe it or not it does work and that's by the biodiversity there. You borrow it, it does its job, you give it back. And it works a treat as well. <laughs> okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments on the presentation? No? Okay, well, thank you ever so much. I think we've all found that really interesting and uh, given us a lot of food for thought. Thank you very much. Uh, so moving on to item five on the agenda, the work plan. So far, we've got no changes. Um, are there any other questions or comments on the work plan for the year? No? Okay, well... In that case, uh, I think that's the end of the meeting. So the next meeting will be on Monday, the 9th of September, 2024, at 3 p.m. And uh, have a lovely summer holiday. Thank you very much. Thank you. What say, Jeremy?